Today on Reese Dixon, we are making this luxurious mink throw blanket in four steps. Hi everybody, it's Teresa with ReeseDixon.com and today's project is the last piece of bedding I'm doing for my master bedroom makeover, but it is perfect for any place you want a snuggly throw blanket or any time you need to give a great gift. Nobody would refuse a snuggly blanket, so this is great for baby showers or Christmas gifts. It's just a great, simple, last minute gift idea for anybody. So this is going to be a snuggly throw blanket that goes on the chair in my bedroom to create my dream little reading corner. And all I'm using is two pieces of fabric. I've got this big snuggle piece here and it's cut to the size that I want my blanket plus about three inches on each side. And you'll get that in a minute. And then this is the other side and this is cut to about an inch and a half smaller than on each side than the size I want for the finished blanket. So basically, I'm doing this because I had two pieces of scrap fabric left over that I wanted to make something great out of. But what I realized is that this is a great way to make a blanket that doesn't have a binding. So if you try to make a quilt or something like that, you're always gonna come up with the problem of how to finish it, that the finish the outside edge. So if you just make something and say, turn it inside out, then you'll have to find a way to get the fabric to not shift. And if you make a quilt, then you'll have all of these raw edges that you have to cover and you, do a binding process, but that often means stitching it by hand or it becomes a little complicated and it's certainly not something you wanna do for the last minute. So with this, we're going to use the larger piece of fabric to make our binding. We'll be making kind of a mitered corner binding by just having it fold in. So with only two pieces of fabric and no extra binding, we're going to be making a gorgeous blanket. So to start, once you've got your smaller piece of fabric um, and your larger piece of fabric cut to the sizes you want, and my inches, you know, you can do this with anything. It, you basically just need to leave on your larger size enough so that it can fold over to reach the not so big size. So any measurements will work. So what you do is you take one side of your fabric and you fold it in half like so, right? And then you take your other fabric and you fold it in half, like so. And then with those two center points, you'll match them right sides together. So that's that center point. And here's this center point. Oh, and I didn't fold it correctly, so I'll just have to mark it with my finger here to mar match those center points like so and pin it. And I'm gonna pin it all the way down one side. And you can see, oh, I guess I left a lot more than a couple of inches, but all of that would just get, all of this just becomes the binding. So you can leave a whole lot less than I did, but like I said, I was just working with scraps I had on hand. So I'm gonna pin it all the way across and just stop where I run out of fabric here. And working one side at a time, I'm going to sew that down, just leaving all of this extra fabric out there. So I'll do that on one side and then move to the opposite end and sew it there and then move to the the outer sides and do the same thing. Just sewing it, always starting, like matching that middle point and then sewing it down. So you'll be left with these big open corners that we will get to <laughs> in a minute. So I'm just gonna start sewing my straight lines and then I'll show you how we put the rest of it together after that. So in case I forgot to mention it, 
in explaining all this sewing, you will need to leave yourself a few inches on one side that's open so you can turn it inside out. We will have to be well, we'll have to do that like uh, so many other blankets. But the nice thing about this is it, it limits that space hugely. So I left this open in the middle of one of my sides so that it didn't interfere with this next step. So once you get all four sides sewn on, you'll have to take this to like a clean living room or someplace that you've got space to spread it out. And you'll have to let the larger side kind of come to the lining side so that you can lay it out flat and you'll start to see how that binding is made all of one piece with the front. So when you get it laid out, you'll start to see this corner just kind of go into place. Like it, you, it will make it very plain where that seam has to be in order to miter that corner properly. So I just, as this was laid flat, and you can see this big old thing just flopping around, I uh, used pins to kind of mark where that, those two sides were going to meet neatly, and that's where I'll sew my seam and then cut all of this extra off. So once I'm done with that, I can, on all four corners of course, I can turn it right side out and again take it to like your living room or something and lay it flat so that you can get all of your uh, sides laying the way you want it to so that we can um, then just secure it. It's like a four step process, so simple. So, to the machine. So once I turned it inside out, because we had done those corners so carefully, everything just kind of fell into place exactly as it was supposed to go. So I didn't have to work too hard to get it lined up again. So now to finish it off, I'm just going to do a line of stitching, like right where the, um, the lining fabric hits the what's become our binding and that will have the added benefit of closing off this little hole as I kind of fold things up properly but it will also just keep the lining from shifting too much so that um, you won't have like two separate pieces that are just kind of clinging to each other so it just gives it a little bit more structure to wear better um, and then it's done and this thing's ready to get thrown on a couch or a chair or my lap, whatever <laughs> whatever I decide looks comfiest in the moment. So with that one seam, now our whole blanket is finished. And now we have this luxurious throw out of what, four steps. We cut it, we sewed the sides, we sewed the corners, we sewed around it. Four steps. So how perfect is this for a last minute? gift, a last minute baby shower, when you want to do something extra nice but you don't want it to look like you're throwing it together at the last second, a mitered corner blanket is your answer. So I hope that this was inspiring for you to give this a try and if you do I'd love to see pictures of it. Bring a little snuggle into your life. If you have any questions leave them down below and I'll help you out and since I'm so close to done, you want to make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you can see how the bedroom looks when it's all put together. So we'll see you next time. Bye!